morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning to receive, receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your bulletin announcement sheet, ask you to please take that out. As you're so doing, ask you, as always, to please uh, fill out the blue booklet at the end of the pew and pass it on down, return it back to its spot. As we look to this week here, a couple things here to mention. Um, as we see today, following the second service, the LYF are having their monthly meeting. So keep that in mind. Now, speaking of the LYF, uh, in the next month, we are going to be preparing to head towards Bozeman, Montana, for our Higher Things Conference. Now, just a brief mention, the Higher Things Conference is, think of a college campus and basically having church kind of functioning like college all week long. And so I'm trying to think of the exact number of services, but it's like close to three to four to even five services a day, plus plenary sessions and so forth. Uh, we have a, a charter bus that will be coming to pick up the youth here at the church. And we're going to be picking up other youth in Mandan and Bismarck as well and heading over to Bozeman. And so that's coming up. So they're doing some more uh, preparing and planning for that today um, at the LYF meeting. As we look to the rest of the week here, a couple things to mention. I'll be out of town here for about a week and a half, uh, so Pastor Roth is on standby. If you have any concerns or questions, please contact Pastor Roth, and he'll be available the next two weeks, uh, so keep that in mind as well. Now, speaking of that, there will be no women's Bible study. Um, however, the men will be meeting on Wednesdays, and so the men's Bible study will be continuing on Wednesdays at 645. There's some announcements on the very back of your sheet as well to kind of keep you informed. I want to make a brief mention of the summer hours. We have some adjusted summer hours for the church office. Uh, that's on the very back of your bulletin as well. As well as keeping in mind, we have a Father's Day barbecue dinner on June 15th. Uh, that's been changed to 7 o'clock. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed or overlooked at this time that need to be mentioned? Well, today, as you can tell, we went from different colors back and forth. Last week was red, this week is white. Today is what we call Trinity Sunday. It's that one day of the year where we, that one Sunday of the year where we dust off that old Athanasian Creed and we stand up and boldly confess who our Lord and God is. Uh, with that in mind, after the sermon, we'll be confessing the uh, Athanasian Creed. It's printed on the inside of your hymnal on page 319. I will speak the odd number of verses, you speak the even number of the verses as we confess that together. Without a minor, opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 507, hymn number 507.
Mr. Congregation, please stand as we turn to 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to your glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. It printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to Him because He has shown His mercy to us. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is Your name in all the earth. You have set Your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants you have established strength. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to Him because He has shown His mercy to us. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. peace from above and for salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the festival of the Holy Trinity is from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans, the 11th chapter. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. According to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent of the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved 
through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 506, hymn number 506. Jesus. Amen. Nicodemus. Yes, Nicodemus. He was no worthless bum. He was no slacker by any means. After all, he was a member of what was called the Sanhedrin. Yes, the great Sanhedrin. He was a member of that group of individuals. Now, to fully understand the, the prestige, yes, to fully understand the prestige and importance of the Jewish Sanhedrin, we must understand that it was a great council, not just a small group, but a great council of the nation, consisting of 71 men. And to be a part of this elite group, one had to have judicial experience, as well as an extensive knowledge of various languages, languages of the nation and languages of those nations around the nation of Israel. They also had to have an extensive knowledge of science and law and history. Not only did the Jewish Sanhedrin, to be a member of this group of individuals, not only did you have to have this extensive knowledge, you also had to be modest and popular with the people of the culture itself. And so it was no small task to be on the high Jewish council, the high Jewish Sanhedrin. Perhaps we could think of this Sanhedrin, the great Sanhedrin, as on the same level as our United States Supreme Court. Yes, they were much like our Supreme Court. But they actually had a little bit more power than our Supreme Court. For example, the Sanhedrin, besides making laws for the whole Jewish nation, the Sanhedrin could crown a king. Yes, they could crown a king. They could authorize war. They could appoint lesser court judges and so forth. The point being, Nicodemus, he was a big dog. Nicodemus, he was a heavyweight. Or loosely stated, he was the big cheese. You get the picture. Now, the reason why we must take time to understand who Nicodemus was 
is so that we understand that he's no common slacker. It's essential for us, indeed, it is essential for us to understand the context of Nicodemus when we read our reading from the Gospel of John this morning. In a reading from the Gospel of John, it would appear that both Jesus and Nicodemus were two people that were close to the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, after all, as we've already mentioned, was a member of the Sanhedrin. And Jesus? Well, Nicodemus, he called Jesus Rabbi. Yes, Rabbi which is like calling him a doctor of the church. It is a very high title indeed. And so again, it would appear that this was a mutual conversation between two individuals that were definitely close to the kingdom of God, two established religious leaders. However, things are often not as they appear. In other words, you would think that Nicodemus would have been one of the few who could have seen the kingdom of God. You would think that out of all the religious people in Jerusalem, that Nicodemus would have been the one of the few who would be able to experience the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, though, things are not as they often appear. You see, dear friends, we have this problem with how we perceive the kingdom of God. For example, we have this tendency not only in the past, but right now, right here, in our modern day and age, we have this tendency to place nuns and monks and bishops, deacons, elders, district presidents, circuit visitors and pastors and so forth, way at the top, closest to God. Whereas we take other individuals, perhaps retail workers, moms and farmers and lawyers and plumbers and electricians, as well as obnoxious children, while they are not as close to God as these religious people are, they're further down on the totem pole. They're further down on the bottom. In fact, we even do this with good works. Indeed, we do this with good works. Keep in mind that all good works are good when they are done by faith and done for one's neighbor. However, we have unfortunately made some works better than others. Tragically, we have made changing diapers for a child or shoveling snow for a neighbor and taking out the trash, lesser good works than going on a mission trip or doing a religious deed within the walls of the church. Mark this. Mark this. God is equally pleased with a nun running an orphanage as he is with a dad changing a dirty diaper. Good works happen inside and outside the walls of the church. Now, the point being made, though, dear friends, is this, the idea that some Christians are somehow closer to God than others, well, it's a foolish, well, it's a foolish idea. And it needs to be eradicated from our minds. This is how the world thinks. Indeed, this is how the world thinks. This is how the world operates. Not the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus tells Nicodemus that he needs to be born again. In other words, make sure you get this. In other words, to see the kingdom of God, all the scrambling up the religious pecking order is useless. Sure, the world insists on ranking. The world insists on grouping and positioning, but not the kingdom of God. And so with one swift assertion, Jesus, Jesus basically tells, yes, Jesus basically tells Nicodemus that if he wants the kingdom of God, that he has to do it all over again. All that Nicodemus had accomplished means nothing and contributes nothing to the kingdom of God. Nicodemus needed to be born anew, born from above. He needed to be reborn and made entirely into a new creature. You see, this is why the church really only cares about baptism and absolution and the Holy Supper. In Christ's church, there is no such thing as ranking or grouping or positioning for power. Paul, he actually says it best. I just love how Paul says it. Paul says to the letter to the Galatians, he says this, There is no longer Jew nor Greek, slave or free. There's no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. In other words, status and sex and ability do nothing to get you and me closer to the kingdom of God. 
You and I cannot climb to the kingdom of God. We cannot climb to the kingdom of God. For if we were to climb, well, we'll never find the kingdom of God. Bluntly stated, we do not find the kingdom of God in the heights of our accomplishments. We do not find the kingdom of God in the clouds of our glory. We do not find the kingdom of God at the peaks of our popularity. For the kingdom of God is not above us, but below us. Yes, below us indeed. You see, dear friends, Jesus, he flips everything upside down. He flips it upside down for Nicodemus. And he does the same for you and me. Listen up. The greatest in the kingdom of God are not the religious elites, but little children. The little ankle biters. Babies. They are the greatest. The Micron, Jesus says. Unless we are changed to become like little Micron, little babies. Well... We will not have the kingdom of God. The greatest in the kingdom of God, well, it's not those who are first, but as we've heard time and time again, it is those who are last. If you want the kingdom of God, you're not to take up a list of goals and accomplishments, but yes, take up a cross and die. But there's a problem with all of this. Our sinful nature, your sinful nature, my sinful nature, our sinful nature does not like to hear this. Your sinful nature... And mine as well likes to climb. Oh, our sinful natures like to climb. Our sinful nature is so easily seduced into trying to go up the pecking order to obtain the kingdom of God. And then once our sinful nature has climbed just a little bit, well, the sinful nature demands that God stands and applauds the heights that the sinful nature has climbed. The sinful nature demands that others give accolades and cheers and applause for the heights that it's achieved. Lord have mercy. On you, and especially me. Dear friends, listen up. We must be born again, Jesus says. Yes, we must be born again. And get this, not just once, and not just twice, but we must be born again every single week, every single day. And to be born again or born from above is not something that we must accomplish again and again by our own strength, by our own merit, but instead, like Nicodemus, to be born again is for us to be brought out of the heights of our glory all the way down to the reality that we are poor, miserable sinners. And they are right there at the bottom with empty, beggarly hands. We are shoved right back into the reality of our baptisms. Right there at the end of our rope, right there at the end of the line, at the bottom of the pecking order, while well, we are forgiven. We're forgiven, absolved of all of our sins. And then we're invited to the Lord's table for the strengthening of our faith and love for our neighbor. Baptized saints, quite simply, you do not do something for Christ to earn the kingdom of God, but instead, Christ does something for you to give you the kingdom of God. That's why we need to be born again. Born from above every single day. And this happens as you are returned to the reality of your baptisms and repentance and faith day after day after day. This happens as the Lord forgives you through his word of absolution. This happens as you are invited to receive the Lord's, yes, the Lord's Supper at this altar. You're constantly being born again when the Lord snatches you out of your lofty sinful nature and drags you back down to the waters of your baptism and makes you anew again and again, and again. And so because there is only one baptism, because there's only one absolution, because there's only one Lord's Supper, get this, you are one with Nicodemus, you are one with each other. That is the reason why there's no boasting in the church. If there is any boasting, it's about Christ and Christ alone. But no boasting in ourselves. No way, no how. This is why there is no comparing in the church. This is why there's no pecking order in the church. The ranks that we have in life, the jobs we maintain in life, and the skills that we have been given, they're not for ourselves. They're for blessing our neighbor, those around us. Indeed, they're not for power, but for service, for they cannot contribute to our eternal salvation. How can they earn the kingdom of God when we have already been born again in Christ? Yes, in Christ and Christ alone. Baptized saints, you have been born again, born from above, through Christ, 
by Christ, and for Christ. You are brought into the kingdom of God through the word and sacraments. Therefore, all oh, the good news is this. So simple. The good news is this. You are brought into the kingdom of God through the word and sacraments. Therefore, you cannot get any closer to the kingdom than you are right now. For Christ is your way. Christ is your truth. And he is your life. He is the kingdom that is brought to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ask the congregation to please stand. As we stand together, let us confess the faith as expressed in the words of the Athanasian Creed on page 319. I will confess the odd numbers and the congregation is invited to confess the even numbers. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such as the Son, and such as the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinities, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the trinity in unity and unity in trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, 
descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. Congregation is asked to please remain standing for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed Father, you have established marriage and sanctified the home to be a place of blessing and love. Give to parent and child the courage to love as you have loved us. Unite them in their common life by your spirit to know Jesus and serve him. Bless the single with chastity, comfort the widowed, protect the orphan, and defend the helpless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the Father, you have suffered fully the cost of love through your Son. Give healing and peace to the afflicted, the grieving, the dying. Especially, we pray this morning for Brenda and Brittany and Jeremy, Ryan, Kari, Carl, Charlotte, Daniel, Don, Fern, George, Isabella, Jameson, Jeff, Joellen, Callie, Karen, Manny, Marilyn, Mark, Pat, Philip, Randy, Robert, Roger, Ruth, Suzanne, Travis, Tracy. We also pray for Sandy and the rest of the families. They mourn the loss of Scott. We pray that we also pray for those that we name in our heart. Give them all that is needful, that they may endure their illness, confident of your presence. Supply them with grace sufficient for their every need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we poor sinners confess that in our flesh dwells no good. If we are left to ourselves, we will die in sin, since that which is born of flesh is flesh and cannot see the kingdom of God. Grant us, we implore you, your grace and mercy, and for the sake of Jesus, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to regenerate us, that we may firmly believe the forgiveness of sins according to your promise and baptism, and daily increase in Christian love and good works, until at last we obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed into the church office or conducted through the church website online. Congregation is asked, please stand for the offertory on 781.
as we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 160, we continue to repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, or one of our sister congregations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only triune God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty, co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Ask our nation to please stand so we thank the Lord on page 164. the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Maybe see if we're departing him. Hymn number 802. Hymn number 802. Good to see everyone out this morning to receive the Lord's Word and Sacrament. Uh, special mention, I uh, just want to mention our condolences to Sandy, Nick, and Ella and the loss of Scott this week. So our prayers are with you here this week as you mourn your loss. So the Lord be with and bless and preserve you as a family. With that in mind also, as we heard today, we must be born again. And that's something that's done to us. It's given to us as a gift. It says we are repented by the law and given the gospel unto faith. Christ constantly doing that, not our climbing, not our huffing and puffing, but the kingdom of God coming to us as a gift. 
You've been born again. You are one in Christ with Nicodemus. Rest in Jesus. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.